In this presentation, we're going to continue on with our notes receivable and accounts receivable problem, focusing in on the notes receivable, converting them from notes receivable to accounts receivable. Allowing us to focus in on those differences between notes receivable and accounts receivable. Remember that the data is on the left side. We're going to enter that information calculating the interest for the notes receivable in our worksheet here. We're going to post any journal entries to the general journal right here. We've been working with this and the cells that are hidden here are the cells that we have done so far. So I don't do this if your worksheet is hidden, but I'm going to unhide, right click or highlight these or select these cells, right click and unhide just to show here's what we've done so far. Now I'm going to undo that, hide them back up. I'm just going to hide those so that we can then see our current data that we're going to be posting to our worksheet. Here's the beginning balance. Here's the entries, including what we've done thus far. And then here's our ending balance. We then have our subsidiary ledger, breaking out the accounts receivable account by customer, summing those up, then adding up to 35,122, that matching what's on the trial balance. Scrolling back over, see what uh, what we are on this time. And let's see, where are we? We're on 8.7. So we have a 90 day 10% note giving MU company an extension on past due accounts receivable. So MU company, in other words, if we scroll back over to the subsidiary ledger, owes us 8,850. They're uh, not paying us. We're gonna move it then from the accounts receivable to a notes receivable moving it from a non-interest bearing receivable to an interest bearing receivable. So we're basically saying we're going to give you an extension, but you have to pay us interest on it. So we're going to scroll back up. That happened, I believe, on 8.7. Let's check it just to make sure. Scrolling back over, scrolling down, 8.7. Yep. All right, scrolling back over, scrolling up. And we're going to say that um, accounts receivable is going to go down. So here's the accounts receivable has a debit balance. We need to do the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm going to copy S6, right click and copy. Put that on the bottom in 06, right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount's going to be what is in the subsidiary ledger for uh, MU, which is 8,850. So we'll put a credit of 8,850. By the way, you might be trying to say, well, why don't we use a formula here? And if you do, just be careful which cell you pick up. Uh, for example, if I was to say I want to put negative to make it a credit of this cell, then I'm going to have a problem uh, when I post something to AU because it's going to change this cell. If, however, I picked up this cell, then uh, it could be something that, be, that would work. So just uh, you want to use formulas as much as possible, but be careful uh, if like the formula that you're using is going to change uh, if you picked up one of these numbers here. So that's why on this one I, I hard code it there, even though the general rule use formulas as much as possible. Then I'm going to put a negative of this number or just an 8,850 using a formula flipping the cell to 8,850. That's going to go into the notes receivable for MU. So that's going to be here, just moving it from one receivable to the other, from an accounts receivable to a notes receivable, from a non-interest bearing receivable to an interest bearing receivable. Right clicking on S10 and copy. I'm going to put that in 05, right click and paste. Values only, one, two, three. Then we're going to indent the second cell in 06, go into the home tab, alignment, increase the indentation. Now let's post this out. Notes receivable here for MU is going to be here on the trial balance. We're going to be in the middle column in U10. We'll say equals and point to that 8,850, bringing the balance from zero up by 8,850 to 8,850. Accounts receivable is going to be here. It's going to be there on the trial balance. There is something in it in U6. Therefore, we will double click on it. Go to the end of it plus point to that 8,850 and enter. So there is that. Now we took it out of accounts receivable and we need to also do that on the subsidiary ledger, the subsidiary ledger breaking out this information by customer. So we're going to be here in AC14 posting the same amount to the subsidiary ledger, not the general ledger, 
subsidiary ledger, breaking it out by customer. This equals in AC14, that 8,850 bringing the balance down to zero. If we were to sum up all the customer balance in the subsidiary ledger, like this, it would add up to 26,272, which should and does match the trial balance. Next transaction, we're going to scroll back over. Actually, we're going to actually do the uh, interest calculation now. Now remember, the interest calculation is not going to be something that we take into effect until the note becomes due, but we're going to calculate it now. And this is often, again, one of the confusing pieces of these types of problems because you're going to say, hmm, there's interest and there's number of days uh, that they gave us and we're not going to do anything with it. And, uh, and, the, and the answer is no, we're not going to do anything with it um, until uh, the, the interest comes due because we haven't, we haven't earned it until time passes. So we're going to say that it was 8,850. This time we have 10% for whatever reason. We're charging MU 10%. Hope he doesn't contact these other people. We gave a 7% rate. Anyway, the interest rate went up for whatever reason. So we're going to go over to the home tab, uh, font and underline. And then we're going to multiply this out. And remember that's 10% per year and we have to break it out. We're going to have to figure it out 10% for however long uh, we had it for, which was 90 days. So we will say this equals the 8,850 times the 10% and enter $885 in interest per year. We need to break that out to what it would be for 90 days. We're going to break that to a daily total first by saying equals 12 months times 30 days or 360, a rounding, an estimate exact would be closer to 365. Then we'll divide that out. So we are in E22. We're going to say this equals the interest for a year, 885, divided by the number of days in the year, 365 or 360 rounded, giving us $2.46 per day of interest earned. Underlining that home tab, font group, underline. Then we're going to say the number of days, which uh, we'll have outstanding, is 90. So 90 days. Uh, Actually, I didn't want to underline this one. I'm going to un underline this 246, home tab, font, underline, and underline the 90, home tab, font, and underline. Then we'll multiply that out. We're in E24. We're going to say equals, point to that 246 times $90, giving uh, 221.25. We're going to make that rounded by just using this cell, which already has the format to round it to the nearest dollar equals that 221.25, bringing it down to 221. Remember this, this is just rounding, so if I go to the home tab and the numbers, it's really that number. But we're gonna round it uh, for our purposes here. And we'll do a quick calculation just with the calculation on, on calculator on this first one, just to show the calculation of interest a few different ways this time. Uh, and then we won't do this again, I don't think. So we're going to say that if we had interest for a year of 885, because remember, every time we say a percentage, it usually means a year. And then we're going to say that there are uh, 12 months in a year divided by 12. And we're having it outstanding for 90 days, uh, 30, 60, 90, three months. So times three. And that'll give us this same number. So we can also calculate this way or with ratios. The ratio being either the number of days, 90, uh, compared to the number of days in a year, rounded 360, would give us 0.25. Or we take the number of months, 3, 30, 60, 90, 3 months, divided by 12, also 0.25, that being a ratio, the ratio giving us the decimal times the interest which is 885 gives us that same 221 so just be aware multiple multiple ways to see that uh, calculation okay so there's our our number next one we're going to go to here on 93 60 day 9% no giving <laughs> note giving C company a time extension on uh, past it should be past due accounts receivable so same thing, C company, we're gonna scroll back over. C company is here, owes us 2,150, didn't pay us, therefore we're gonna move it from a non-interest bearing uh, receivable account 
to an interest bearing receivable account from accounts receivable, in other words, to notes receivable. So it's in accounts receivable, it's in here. We're gonna take it out of there, put it into a notes receivable. The date then is gonna be, I believe, 9-3. Gonna go with that, I think that's right. So we're gonna say accounts receivable has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm gonna copy, right click and copy accounts receivable, put that on the bottom of the date in 09, right click and paste, one, two, three. The amount then will be, if we take a look at subsidiary ledger, 2,150. So I'm gonna put that on the credit side, make it a negative for a credit, 2,150. We're gonna have a debit for the same amount for the debit side, I'm gonna use that with a formula negative of that number taking that number and flipping the sign it's going to go into the accounts so the notes receivable which we're going to break out into their own account for each note receivable for each customer in our trial balance so this customer was c company right there so in s8 right clicking copy one asset for another asset one asset going down one asset going up one asset being a non-interest bearing account one asset being an interest bearing account one being a receivable typically for a shorter time period, the other typically for a longer. Then I'm gonna right click and paste one, two, three. We're gonna indent this accounts receivable, go into the home tab, alignment, increase the indenting, then record this out. Here's the notes receivable in the, in the journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. We're gonna be in U, uh, U8 and say equals Point to that 2150, bringing the zero balance up by 2150 to 2150. Accounts receivable is here on the journal entry. We're going to post it here on the trial balance in cell U6, double clicking, going to the end, plus pointing to that 2150, bringing the balance down. Then we'll go to, to C company over here. We're going to bring it down with a credit. So we are in AC7, within AC7, equals, point to that 2150, bringing the balance down to zero. And that then means that if we add up all of our subsidiary ledger accounts, adds up to 24,343, that then matching to 24,343 on the trial balance. Scrolling back over, we're gonna do this calculation for C company. Same type of calculation, we're gonna say that uh, we had the beginning balance starting at 2150. 2150. They also had a 10% interest rate. So it looks like the interest just went up. It's not, it's not the customer word. Interest rates went up. That's just how it happens over time. So then we're gonna go to the home tab, font and underline, and we'll multiply that out. So we're gonna say this equals the 2150 times 10%. So that's G18 times G19, giving us the 215 per year. Remember that's per year. We're gonna break that out per day by dividing by the number of days, rounded to equals 12 times 30, 12 months times 30 days, or 360. We will underline that, go into the home tab, font, underline, do the calculation, the division problem, the uh, total for a year divided by the number of days, interest per year divided by days in a year, equals the interest per year, 215, divided by days in a year, 360, and that gives 60 cents per day. Then we're going to say the number of days outstanding, if we scroll back over, 60. 60, is that right? Yeah, it looks like 60 days, so I'm going to put 60 here and underline that so we're going to go to the uh, home tab and uh, font and underline and then we'll multiply that out the interest per day times the number of days equals the 60 cents per day times number of days uh, 60 days giving us the uh, 3583 and then we'll just round that saying equals the 3583 giving the, the 36 and I actually made an error here. Notice it says 9% rather than the 10% I picked up from the prior one. So it looks like interest went that back down. And note that because we used formulas, I can go up here and just change this 10 to a 9. And this 36 will calculate down to 32. 
So it'll do that all for us, meaning if I do the same calculation, this is how many per um, interest per year. 360 days doesn't change. If we divide out the amount per year divided by 360, we get 54 cents per day divided by 60 days gives us that 32.25. So then on 11.2, received payment of principal and interest from C company. So we're going to say we received the principal and the interest. So if we scroll back over and what, what, what day was that? 11.2. So 11.2. 11.2. We're going to say is cash affected? We're going to say it is. We received payment. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it to go up by doing the same thing to it. Another debit. Right clicking on the cash and copying. Putting that in 011. Right click and paste. One, two, three. Now the amount is going to be the original amount, 2150 plus the interest we earned, 32. 2150 plus 32. 2150 plus 32 equals 2150 plus 32. So that's how much we're going to get. And then we're going to have to take the note receivable off the books. It's on the books here for that 2150. Not including the 32, not including the interest we have earned yet. We're going to have to record that interest. So this is going to be a credit. This is a debit balance here. Therefore, we need to make it a credit to make it go down. So in S8, we're going to right click and copy. We're going to put that in O12, right click and paste, one, two, three. Indent that, go into the home tab, alignment, increase indenting. Putting that credit in Q12 for that 2150 with a negative 2150. The credit will be that interest amount of that 32. I'm going to use the negative sum, the plug form formula to get to that 32 by putting in Q13, a negative SUM. Double click that sum function, highlighting those uh, cells with uh, values in them, <laughs> giving us the 32 credit. Then we're going to put the credit uh, account, which is going to be interest receivable. So, I'm sorry, interest revenue, interest revenue. Revenue account, we earned revenue. So here's the revenue account, it has a credit balance. We're gonna make it go up, doing the same thing to it, another credit. So I'm gonna copy S18, the revenue, interest revenue, and copy. Put that in O13, right click and paste. One, two, three. We're gonna then indent O13, go into the home tab, alignment, increase indenting. Then we can post this out cash first so cash up top send u5 gonna double click on it because something's in it go to the end of it plus point to that 2182 and enter notes receivable for C company here is gonna go here in u8 double click go to the end of it plus that 2150 and enter so it goes down to zero then the interest revenue is going to be down here. Interest revenue has a credit balance. We're going to double click on it because something's in it. Go to the end of it plus point to that 32, bringing revenue up, putting us back in balance and bringing net income up as well. So increasing uh, the income, of course, by the interest revenue earned for the note receivable, taking the notes receivable off the book and recording the cash. Note that this is the same journal entry we would have for accounts receivable other than we now have to record the revenue earned for the interest revenue. Not because we made a sale, but for the loan, for us renting the money out in essence. Okay, next transaction. We're going to say on 11.5, received, pay received payment uh, of principal and interest from MU company. So that was the 8,850 plus this 221 that happened on 11.5. So I'm going to say 11.5. We can say, is cash affected? But we're gonna say, yep, yeah, we got paid again for the note receivable, cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up doing the same thing to it, another debit, right click on that cash and copy. We're gonna put that up top in 015, right click and paste, one, two, three. The amount will be four. It's gonna be this 8,850 plus the 120, or the 221. This equals the 8,850 plus 221. So there is that. And then we're gonna have the notes receivable. I'm gonna scroll back over. Uh, note receivable for MU here. 
we're going to credit that amount. So I'm just going to copy that, right click and copy. Put that right underneath in 016, right click and paste 123. Then indent, home tab, alignment, increase the indenting. Amount then in the credit section, Q16 for 8850. We're going to put a negative 8850. And there we have it. Now the difference between those two will be this interest, 221. So we could put the credit 221 there. I'm going to use our negative sum or plug formula. So we'll say negative SUM. Double click that sum function. Highlight those four cells with two numbers in them. The difference between them being that 221. The 8850 plus the 221 equals the debit of 9071. That then will be revenue, interest revenue. So we're going to copy a revenue and put that in 017, right click and paste 123. Indent this cell, home tab, alignment, increase indenting. Let's record this one out. We're going to say cash first. That's our first, trans first <laughs> account in the journal entry. It's going to be up here, up top. We're going to put that in U5, something's in it, so we'll double click on it. Go to the end of it and say plus and point it to that 9071 and enter. Next we have the notes receivable. So here's the notes receivable. Here's the notes receivable for MU on the trial balance. Here it is, uh, U10, double click, go to the end of it, plus, point to that 8850, enter, bringing the balance down to zero. And then the interest revenue down here in U18, we're gonna record this interest revenue to U18, double click, go to the end of it, plus, point to that 221, enter brings the balance going up for interest revenue that we earned and putting us back in balance, net income going up by the interest revenue. Last one we have here, and we're gonna say that uh, write off P company account against allowance for doubtful account. So now we're gonna say P company, we just basically gave up on, we don't think that we're gonna get paid, maybe they went bankrupt or something like that. And if we scroll over, we're gonna say, here's P company in the receivable. So receivable here here's p company we we didn't give p company extension we said we just gave up on p company we don't think they're going to pay us we're not going to make up a loan payment for them because we think it's just unlikely we're going to get paid therefore we're writing them off and we're not doing business with them again so um unless you know something happened i don't know we're not going to <laughs> so we're going to write them off in any case so this this amount is in the receivable instead of transferring it to a note receivable we're just going to write it off to the allowance for doubtful account assume and we're using here of course the allowance method which has this allowance for doubtful accounts so in other words this account accounts receivable needs to go down and we're going to put these other half into the allowance so accounts receivable has a debit balance we're going to do the opposite thing to it which is a credit and i believe the date here that we need to use is 12 1 12 1 let's make sure I'm getting lazy in the last part here 12 1 yeah that's right. That's the one. So accounts receivable has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm going to right click and copy S6. I'm going to put that on the bottom of the journal entry in O20. Right click and paste. One, two, three. I'm going to indent that. Home tab. Alignment. Increase indenting. And we're going to put the amount that is owed to us by... Uh, who, who is this oh, the, by P company P company so thanks for reminding me P company so we're gonna put that in the credit side Q20 we're gonna put negative 3800 then we're gonna debit something so we are in P19 I'm gonna do that with a formula by saying negative of that number and enter and the debit will not go to a note receivable this time but writing it off to the allowance we're not putting it to bad debt expense. Note that would be what we do under a direct write-off method. We're using the allowance method and allowance already having been set up and we're just gonna write it off there. So we're gonna right click and copy, scrolling back down and we'll, we'll talk a lot more about allowance method in the allowance method portion of the accounts receivable as well. So O20, right click and paste, one, two, three. So now we'll just post this one out, allowance first. So here's the allowance, here it is on the trial balance, we are in U7. 
We're going to say equals and go down and point to that 3,800 and enter. So that brings the balance down in the allowance account. Uh, it actually flips it and that's, that, that's fine. We'll talk about that later. So we're going to go to the U6, double click, something's in it, and accounts receivable. Go to the end of it and plus. Scroll back down and go to that 3,800 and enter. Bringing the accounts receivable down, putting us back in balance. No effect on net income. Notice it's similar to us then uh, making a, a note receivable in that there's no effect on net income. We're recording it um, in the case of notes receivable to another asset. In this case, to a contra asset. So we typically have a credit balance in the, in the allowance, and we um, are, are just basically uh, no effect on the net assets really, because it was here, and then we had this credit balance, and we just basically took it out of the accounts receivable and then reversed it right underneath with the allowance account. So in any case, using the allowance method has no effect on net income as, as well as does putting it to the uh, note receivable has no effect on net income until we earn the interest revenue on it because under both circumstances we already earned the revenue when we sold uh, well, whatever we sold when we earned it, uh, when we got the accounts receivable, when we put the accounts receivable on the books. So now we need to do the same thing here and to the P account and take it off the books. They no longer owe us money, not because they paid us, not because we're going to get the money in the future, not because we transferred it to a note, but because we gave up on it. So we're going to say this equals that same 3,800, bringing the balance for P company down to zero. If we add up all of our subsidiary ledger accounts, all the customers that owe us money, they add up to 20543 which should tie out to be the same as the amount on the trial balance as it is.